Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Chris and welcome to Linux Tech Geek. So about a week ago, I made a video called DWM Day 1. And I'm doing this 30-day challenge that I set for myself running suckless software for 30 days. And I'm going to give you guys my opinions on it and tell you guys um, the stuff that I'll continue to use in the future and some of the stuff that I'll just I'll probably never use again. Um, now I have done, um, I've done a little bit to the configuration file and I've also updated a lot of the patches. So let's go ahead and jump into the desktop and then I'll show you guys what I've done and uh, show you guys my new configuration file. So let's go ahead and pull up the terminal. So uh, I still, I'm still using the uh, ST terminal right now. Um, but that may change, and I'll, I'll kind of explain the the reason later. But let's go ahead and check out um, check out my source, and then we'll check out um, we'll check out the patches. I'll I'll tell you guys what I've updated um, patches wise, and then I'll show you guys my configuration file. But go to patches, and then we'll go to current patches. Do an ls. Now, I have gotten 15 patches installed on this DWM build. And um, I'll definitely be pushing this build of DWM onto my GitLab. Um, but just understand right now, I have not gotten around to doing that. But um, I'll try to make it a priority uh, sometime this week. So let's go ahead and jump into the patches. So... Some of these patches are going to be the same patches that I installed last time, and some of these are all new. Um, okay, so the DWM Always Center patch. Uh, this is going to allow you to, whenever you pull up like a scratch pad or something like that, um, to always have the, um, the window always be center. The all, uh, Auto Start patch... That is a patch to auto start stuff uh, when DWM launches. Um, so right now I have. Um, let's go ahead and cat that. Sorry about that. So we can cat my auto start file. Um, so pretty much I have nitrogen, um, which does wallpaper stuff. I got PyCom, which is my compositor. I've got Emacs Damien running um and then i'm using sl sl status as my status bar um so that's pretty much the only thing that launches when d when i boot up into dwm um bar height and bar padding patch uh this just fixes the bar a little bit uh the bar height i can make the bar height um as big as I want, and I can make the padding. Um, so padding is how close the icons are to each other, and uh, I believe I can make the padding from the left-hand side and the right-hand side as well. Um, so, like, from this part right here, um, I could have it spaced perfectly with this uh, window if I wanted to, but... Uh, cursor warp, this allows the cursor, so, so I do run two monitors, I, um, I use my laptop monitor and I use an external monitor, so what cursor warp allows you to do whenever I'm using, uh, whenever I send something to my other monitor, um, and I switch to that monitor, the cursor will automatically, uh, warp in the center of the screen, um, to that monitor uh cycle layouts this pretty much allows you to cycle through your layouts because dwm by default doesn't allow you to do that even though it really should um functional gaps and per tag so this is two patches in one uh i really like this patch by the way um so functional gaps gives you gaps right it's it's pretty much it um and then per tag what per tag allows you to do is you can have different layouts per tag so if 
like if I had for instance if I had two windows over here and then I went to a different tag um I could have like it like this and then I could have it like that if I wanted to and then if I went to my tag one as you can see it's a different layout and the windows are different um per tag um by default layouts um and how you have stuff set up like um like your sizes of your windows by default uh dwm puts that all together on one tag so like if i had if i had this saved or whatever then if i went to tag four for instance um it would be the same and um i just don't like that i like i like being able to have different layouts and different styles per layout depending on what i'm actually uh doing so that's what um the per tag layout does um get out of here Patches. All right, and then key cords. Um, I am running the key cord patch. Um, so what key cords allows you to do is I hold down Control, Mod key F, and then I hit V. V I F M will appear. Well, if I hit Control, Mod key F, and then R. Ranger will appear and then I have another one for uh, the LF file manager, but for some reason LF does not um, I'll show you guys what LF does. Um, so if I do LF Yeah, LF just does not does not want to work um, I also have these set for browsers so if I hold control, uh, so if I do, I think it's just uh, mod key and B, and then if I do mod key B, B, as you can see, it pulled up Brave. If I do mod key B, and then F, it pulls up Firefox. And then if I do mod key B, um, Q, oh, that, yeah. It pulls up Cute Browser. And then if I do Mod Key B and then S, it pulls up Surf. Surf Browser. They're pretty, mu pretty much, it gives you more key binds to work with um, because you can set different things. So you can, like, how I have my browser set up. So Mod Key B. The B is going to stand for browser, and then whatever key comes after that, like mod key B B is brave, mod key B uh, Q is cute browser, mod key B uh, S is surf. So it allows you to set pretty much the same key binding, like mod key whatever, and then add an extra key. What I also could do is you could have like you could have like a a regular key. My key bind, so you could do my uh my key B my key B might do something or my key B uh control R might do something. Um, I'll show you guys what I'm exactly talking about when we head into the uh, configuration. Um, restart sig. So what restart sig allows me to do is I can restart DWM without logging out of DWM. Um, if you guys have ever patched DWM before, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. And that um, if you don't have this patch, every time you make a change to DWM, you have to log out of your computer and log back in. Um, you don't have to restart your computer, but you have to log out of uh, the X session. So this allows me to make changes to dwm and then just restart dwm and i don't have to keep logging in and out um and then rotate stack um if i can show you guys this 
I'm pretty sure. So you guys um don't exactly know. There it is. No, that's not it. I do not know what my rotate um my rotate key binding is right now. Is it not that? I'm trying to figure this out. So okay, that's pretty much it right there, right? Like So I can rotate through the stack. Um, I don't use that patch. I mean, I don't. I don't really use that a whole heck of a lot. Um, so I apologize for not knowing the key binding there. Um, there are a couple of key bindings that I still have not set for myself yet. So um, I'm still playing around with this configuration file, but it is slowly getting there. Um, and then scratch pads, what scratch pads allow you to do is if I use my mod key Y, it's going to pull up a scratch pad for, um, for a terminal. If I do uh, mod key U, it's going to pull up, um, I believe this is Ranger. So um, it's pretty cool. Uh, what I really like is that, like, let's say that, let's say that I need uh, HTOP to run, but I'm just like, you know what, I want to keep HTOP running, but I don't want it to be in the way. I don't, you know, so I can just, I can hide it. And now HTOP is still running. See, I can hide it, bring it back. So this is cool, like you can, you know, have a, a, a music player playing and then you can hide it when you don't need it bring it back when you do need it and um yeah it's just a nice little way of having um having a keybind automatically run something um that's not really uh in the way so status 2d with status 2d patches um it allows me to have like uh color in my status bar as you can see I'm, i do have a little bit going on here um in my status bar now um I, I, I imagine my status bar has completely changed from the dwm day one video uh check that video out if you guys haven't um because you can see i, I have made some changes um but my status bar is pretty plain uh right now um i just have some ram stuff going i have actually i think this is processor i think this is ram or it might be reversed i'm not sure and then this is my volume control and then of course the calendar and the, the time of day i do need to fix that time of day because i want i want uh am and pm showing not uh military time but <clears throat> pretty cool and uh, i think i am going to add some color um to this um, I just haven't gotten around to to doing it yet. Um, sticky. So what's sticky? So the sticky um, patch allows you to make something sticky, and I want to show you sticky because this is kind of this is pretty neat. Uh -oh. Okay. So let me. So if I hold mod key S. I believe that's my sticky thing. Now watch what happens when I switch to a different tag. Did you see that? It stayed with me. Let's switch to another tag. It's the same window. So let's do a let's do an LS. Right? It's the same it's the same it's the same window. I'm switching tags, but the thing's following me around. So sticky allows you to it'll uh, whatever you designate to be sticky, um, it'll follow you around through all your tags. Now this patch really, I mean there's a couple uses that I could see uh, really using this. I haven't really used this at all yet, but um, I'm pretty sure you could find something to use uh, for it. So let me unsticky this. Now if I hit mod key S again, 
Did you see that? It went away. That's because it goes back to its original spot. So my key S is sticky. And then I can switch all through my tags. It's sticky. Uh, and now if I do mod key S, it goes away. So pretty neat. <clears throat> swallow. What is swallow? So swallow, and I don't, I don't think I could show you guys this last time. Uh, that's partly why I'm going over some of the patches again. Um, window swallowing allows you to, like, I can kind of show you guys this better than I could explain it, but um, let's say you open up a music player. Originally, if you, like, if I opened up BLC, for instance, right? Uh, VLC would open up on the right-hand side. Uh, it would not open up like this without the swallow patch. So, if I do XSIV, and then we can just do this one. Um, but as you can see, it didn't open up on the side as a different window. It swallowed the terminal. Um, that's kind of what the name implies. So, it swallows whatever... Um, whatever terminal that you're you're running that command in. Um, so this is really really good for, as you can see, like using a uh, command line um, application to open up uh, <clears throat> pictures and stuff like that, wallpapers. Uh, this is really good for music. I mean, uh, music players, uh, video players, especially video players, because, um. You know, you open up something, you don't need to see, you don't need to see the terminal um, on the left-hand side, just not, not doing anything, right? Um, so, I, I really like this patch. Um, last time, I don't believe I had this working exactly right, but now I do, and uh, it is pretty, uh, it's pretty cool. <clears throat> And then, last but not least, tag, uh, tag other monitor. So, this allows me to send windows from my current monitor to my other monitor. Now, if, you, if you're not running two monitors or, or three monitors or whatever, um, you don't really need this patch. Um, but, if you are running multi-monitors, um, then... Having the ability to send windows to another monitor is pretty awesome. Uh, specifically for like stuff like OBS, because what I like to do, how I record these videos is OBS is actually open right now on my other monitor. And then that, uh, and then OBS is looking at my external monitor, that's what it's recording, right? Like, I can kind of show you, um, so, this is, that's what's actually happening on my other monitor, and then we switch it back to my current uh, monitor that I do want to show you guys. So, it's just nice to be able to look at OBS, make sure OBS is still running, and it hasn't crashed or anything like that, and, uh, you know, I could send stuff over there if I wanted to but let's look at um, let's go ahead and look at my configuration file first and then we'll talk about some of the other software that I installed um, so this is <clears throat> this is my configuration file um, so one of the things I have changed is I've put the ASCII art like everyone else pretty much does um, at the top here. Um, and then um, author is me, of course, and then my YouTube channel. And then I'll have my GitLab up there as well um, after I upload this to GitLab. And then I just want to say that this configuration file is inspired 
um, by guys like DistroTube, Luke Smith, um, the Linux cast, um, other YouTubers um, that focus on Linux and everything. Um, some of this stuff, some of this stuff is pretty hard to configure, and um, it's really nice to be able to look at someone else's configuration to figure out exactly how they did it. Um, specifically, key cords. Um, I use DistroTube's uh, key cord. Um, I looked at his configuration, looked at how he had it set up, and then I could say, "Oh, okay, that's how that's how it works." Um, and then I think Luke Smith. I used the way that he did scratch pads or something. It was either Luke Smith or the Linux cast. But um, check out those guys if if you haven't um, already. I'm pretty sure most of you probably have. But uh, I just want to say that yeah, a lot of this stuff was kind of borrowed from everyone's configuration files and stuff so um go over some of the configuration so here we go so we got my border pixels um so you can see border around the window um this is emacs by the way doom emacs emacs um so the border pixel is the like the highlighted portion around my window um so i have it set to one pixel i may change it to two pixels so you can actually see a little bit better um and then this is kind of cool too um this start with gaps so you can customize which tag starts with gaps and which tags don't start with gaps. I have it set to one. That means all of um, all of the tags have uh, have gaps. But if I wanted to, I could customize it where you know three windows or or, or four tags don't have gaps. So that's pretty cool. Still haven't played around with it too much, um, but I may mess with that a little bit. All right, so this gap X, this is the default um, default gaps between. Um, I'm pretty sure X is horizontal, so I'm, that might be the gaps between these tags. I'm not a hundred percent sure. That's what I think it is, though. Uh, so you can see my tags have like ten. 10 pixels between them that just me that just makes it where your tags are not all like squished up and stuff um and makes it really hard to read i like stuff you know being easy to read um the swallow floating uh one if i had to set to one it, it means it would swallow floating windows um i don't want i don't want um window uh Floating windows to be swallowed uh, by default. Um, so of course, show bar, top bar, you know what that is. That's just dealing with the bar. Um, so this is bar height. Yeah, this is that bar height patch I was telling you guys. So I have my bar height set to 28. I think that's, tw I don't know. I don't know if that's pixels or what. It might be pixels. But um yeah, if I set this thing, I mean I can set this thing to whatever I want and that's how big the bar will be. Um I can make it a lot smaller if I wanted to also, but um like I said, I like stuff being able to uh you know, me being able to read stuff. Um and then of course we got this burp pad and then we have this side pad um so this is the padding of the bar um of course my font is sauce code pro um uh, haven't done anything really with the font yet um and then the color scheme i'm still using the default color scheme um really need to change that i'm probably going to be using the dracula color scheme um in my uh bar 
Um, and what's nice with Emacs is you can actually see the colors right here. So to get rid of this blue, I just mess with this this uh color right here, and then I could change it to whatever I want. Um, pretty cool. Um, so this this stuff right here, this is um my scratch pad stuff. And then right here, I'm just defining um, defining my scratch pads so you can see it uses the ST terminal. Um, and then one of them is Ranger and one of them is just a regular terminal. Um, and I showed you guys that from earlier. So that's Ranger. That's my terminal. And this is how you define um, that variable. <clears throat> um so my tags as you can see i do i'm not using numbers anymore uh that was something in that first video that i, I told you guys that i really wanted to uh, fix um so i did i am now using icons which i think looks a whole lot heck of a, um, a whole lot better um So these are my floating rules. Uh, I haven't done too much with this yet. Um, I'm going to be adding a lot more stuff to this. Um, but pretty much... Um, as, so you see ST right here, how I have ST defined. And then we have... It's the is terminal. This allows for window swallowing. So if I had this, if I had this set to zero right here, then it would not swallow um, stuff like uh, you, you guys seen Windows swallowing earlier. But um, and or if I had it set to no swallow, then it wouldn't uh, swallow either. Um, of course, I have no swallow set to zero, and then I have is terminal set to one because I want the ST terminal to be able to swallow. In fact, let's go ahead and let's look at let's look at alacrity because I do not have alacrity set to swallow windows by default. So, SXIV. Perfect example of window swallowing. I can't believe I didn't think about this earlier. So, as you can see, I have XXIV. It's running over here, and then I have the, the picture over here, right? That looks stupid. Like, it's, it's using a window for nothing. And what sucks is if I close out this terminal right here, or if I close out this, it exits the application right now with window swallowing and how i have it defined um with st if i do the same thing as you can see it swallowed that terminal you don't even see that terminal anymore until i exit out the application and the pictures are in full screen um so this is a whole lot better um definitely use the uh the window swallowing uh patch um if you guys do run dwm <clears throat> actually i need to set that for alacrity too all right so this m factor right here um this just means my master window will be 55% and the other window will be uh, 45%. Now, typically, I like to make them 50 and 50. So, what I mean is, so you can see this new window right here, it's 55%, right? And this one over here is 45. Uh, that's the default. I haven't changed it yet, but normally, I like, to, I like them to run at 50 and 50. <clears throat> And then this in master one, that's just the number of clients in the master area. The master area is the uh, left-hand side. 
Um, and then this is defining a bunch of layouts. Um, still using the same layouts, the same ones that just come with um, DWM. I haven't added any yet. Um, I'm afraid to patch this thing anymore because I know I'm, I'm getting very close. 15 patches for DWM is a lot of patches. And I had, after about 8 patches, I had to go in there on every single patch and I had to edit everything manually uh, to get it to work. So um, it's, it's a lot. Um, it changes the code quite a bit. So this is defining um, my mod key. And um, I like the mod 4 mask, which means that the mod key is the super key or the Windows key uh, on your keyboard. I don't like my mod key being control or alt or whatever the default is. I think alt's the default, and uh, I don't like that. Um, so you see right here I have Emacs defined. Um, I'm actually going to get rid of this right here because um, I'm not using this variable. And I keep getting a warning every time I make this, so I'm, I'm probably going to uh, change that. Um, but as you can see, I do have my terminal and I do have the menu defined up here, so... Um... All right, so this is going over some of the key bindings. Um, I do apologize about the um, the look of the way that my key bindings are set up right now. Um, they're all squished together. Um, I need to go in there and I, I need to fix that. Um, so I'm, I'm I am planning on fixing a lot of the this default stuff in here. Um, <clears throat> I just haven't gotten around to doing it. Um, so. Pretty much, um, some of this stuff is the way that DWM has it, and then some of the stuff that I added, um, and then I'll show you my key chords in a second. Um, but pretty much, we got D menu and you know terminal spawns, um, and then we can toggle the bar. Pretty much just basic stuff. Um, now, one thing that I did want to show you guys is you see how I had this include shift view. Uh, what shift view allows you to do is that instead of hitting mod key and then five and mod key um, six, you know, to go to the different tags, um, because when you get to about five and six, that's a weird like hand contortion. So what I can do with shift view is if I hold down the super key and I do page up, you see how I'm going to different, different tags and I can cycle through them. Um, now one thing that is kind of weird when you do, do that shift view, um, thing is it does pull up your scratch pad for some reason. I don't know if that's a bug or if it's... I don't know. I don't know if that's intention or if it's a bug or whatever, but um, it does pull up your scratch pads if you have a scratch pad. So that's the only annoying thing, but, um, you know, it beats having to do, like, a weird hand contortion um, to go to different tags. And right here... You can see I'm toggling my scratch pads. So one of the scratch pads um, that um, this mod key X, I'm actually not using that right now. Um, but I think some of this stuff was the default. Um... So these are going to different different tags right here. And then right here, um, I'm setting mod key shift and then control and then R. That's my quit. Um, so that quit will restart DWM, that restart SIG patch. And then 
um, the other quit um, with the Q that logs you out of DWM. And then we can go to my custom key cord keybinds. So you can see how it's kind of set up. So instead of having a one here, you need a two here instead. And then for web browsers, so you have mod key B on all of them, right? And then the zero means that there's not another key. And then you can see the B right here. So mod key, mod key B, and then B that opens up Brave. Mod key B, F opens up Firefox. And the reason I have it Brave bin and Firefox bin is because I'm running Gentoo Linux and um, I'm running a binary version of um, those applications. So if you guys do get this configuration file, just understand that um, you may need to change this right here. Um, to just Brave or just Firefox, um, in order for <clears throat> in order for that to work, um, because I don't run a I don't um, it would take all day to compile compile uh, Firefox or to compile Brave from uh, from source. So I, typically, I just get the binary versions of um, those applications. And so that's what the slash bin is, and then for Q browser, you can see I have mod key B and Q. And then that spawns Q browser. And then, um, you know, I got mod key B for browser, then S for surf. And I try to keep it kind of like that. So B for brave, F for Firefox, Q for Q browser. Um, it just helps me remember stuff like that. Um, so I try to keep it like that as much as I possibly can. And then, um, as you can uh, also see my file managers right here. So mod key, control, and then F for file manager, right? F for file manager. And then L will open up LF if it worked. But uh, for some reason, it just doesn't open up. Um, and then mod key control F again. And then R for Ranger. Or mod, mod key control F again. And then V for VIFM. So as you can kind of see, I try to keep it. Um, I don't know what the term is, but I try to keep it about the same. So F for file manager. B for browser, um, and then uh, again with Emacs. Uh, so I do have Emacs um, working and installed. Um, so for Emacs, I have it control, I mean, mod key E, you know, E for Emacs. And then I'm going to have some different Emacs stuff there later. So that's kind of how I have it set up. Um, and then I have some default um, stuff right here. So pretty much that's that's the configuration file. Um, let's go ahead and open up another terminal here, and then we'll go and then let's talk about some of the patches that uh, I used to run, but I'm not running anymore. So I'm not running the vanity gaps, and I'm not running the attach below. Uh, pretty much, I have it set to default um, when new window spawns. So, new window spawn spawns in the master. I've kind of gotten used to it now. It was a little weird uh, when I initially started doing it um, or start playing around with it, but now I've kind of gotten used to it. And not only that, but if I wanted to switch it, I, you know, I could. But um, and then the vanity gaps. So, I mean, I have gaps running. Um, so, and I try to keep the gaps patch as little as possible. And I've seen that gaps patch with the per tag patch. Um, that's the reason I'm just using that uh, gaps patch. And then... So here are some patches that I thought about using. Um, 
So I thought about using actual full screen patch. Um, I guess that makes the window actually full screen. And then um, here, this this client uh, mono CLS symbol. This just makes you have a different symbol, I guess, when you're in full screen. Um, and then this MPD control patch. This allows you to, uh, I believe it allows you to set a keybind for um, your music player. And since I use MPD, um, I thought about using uh, that patch as well. I forgot what the warp patch does. And then the X resources patch, um, that allows you to define colors and everything in your X resources file. And then, and then DWM will read from that um luke smith that's how i believe that's how he used to set up his uh dwm as he used to use that x resources file so um that's where i got the idea but i just didn't install it um didn't really need it um and then let's go ahead and go to uh, we can check out sl status real fast um you can do it and bam, it don't matter. So for SL status, this is how I'm getting all my status information. Um, as you can see, I did use someone else's because I didn't know how to do it. Um, I guess this is Spanish, so I used some Spanish guys um, thing. But um, all it does is CPU monitor, RAM monitor, and then um this is for um to get the a mixer volume and then uh of course date and time um now i'm gonna be changing this stuff right here i just haven't gotten around to doing it um because i want to add color and um i don't need these um these comments in spanish also, I think I want to add a couple more things up there. So, um, but that's that. <clears throat> haven't haven't done anything with it. Um, and then ST. And let's see if I added anything to ST. No, ST is still the same. Um, and then surf. This was a big one. So before, um, I did have to recompile uh, Web Two Kit, um, because it just would not allow me to use surf. Um, so, um, I do got surf installed. I haven't, haven't done anything. Uh, duck, duck, go. Um, but it is installed. It does work. Um, it's a little, it's a little janky, I'll admit, it's, uh, not too much things to say about it, I mean, it works, but I would not use this thing full time, um, but if you're in a, if you're on a website kind of like this, like the Suckless website, then, uh, yeah. Uh, definitely see that you can use surf or cute browser or anything like that so um i just haven't really haven't played around with it too much um and last but not least yeah so <clears throat> you guys just saw that right me typing out uh neovim for some reason, <laughs> and this is this has I think this is has something to do with ST. Um, some reason, ST is crashing whenever I load up uh, NeoVim. Um, not sure what happened. It, it used to work. It was working fine like a week ago, um, but I uh, updated NeoVim and now it just does not work. Um, so this is kind of what happens. Let's do NVIM. 
and it crashed ST. <clears throat> I don't know if there's a patch I need to use, but and this is the reason I know it's ST is because if we do if we pull up our alacrity and then we do NBIM, boom. Works, right? Um, so so as far as um as far as the patching and everything like that, um I've been enjoying DWM. Um there's a lot of things that um I still need to mess with in the configuration file, um, as well as patch like um I need to patch a couple more applications, um, and then I need to configure those. Obviously, I do want to get my status bar um working a little bit better than what it is right now. I mean, it works, but I could spice it up a little bit. So this is day seven. Um, so far, so good. A couple buggy things, but um, yeah, that's kind of what I expected. So until next time, I want you guys to take care, be safe, and peace.